I'm Ray Bonnenberg with the Ontario Maple Syrup Producers Association. I'm a maple producer near Pembroke, Ontario. This video talks about afforested sites. A lot of maple producers talk to our association about tools and tips and techniques to actually move through from an early stage sapwood, polewood stand to thriving maple trees that one can tap. So what is afforestation, afforested land? It's land that was previously farmed, probably most likely cultivated, uh, many times grazed. Maple likes loose soil. So when cultivation happens, the soil loosens and species pop up like ash, basswood, oak, and maple. Maple will grow aggressively from little saplings into poles, into larger trees, but obviously some assistance of thinning will help. So the first thing we advise that landowners do is to start thinning when the saplings are small. Try to determine a potential future crop tree, one that can turn into a tappable maple. Some of it is the art of the obvious. So taking out smaller or more diseased or damaged trees or dead trees at the beginning is wise. And then leaving some of the trees around it to determine your best crop tree. We like to suggest the hockey stick six foot rule. So you just take your, your stick and you, and you go around six feet around the radius of your potential crop tree. And for the sake of argument, we're looking at this one. Nice, healthy, tight bark maple, no uh, forking branches up top, uh, no visible sign of any disease. So all of those young saplings, whatever species, would be taken out to uh, help further along this crop tree. There are going to be times when you go through your afforested area, a little bit more difficult decisions to make. Here we have some trees that are fairly good size. The obvious is to remove the smaller saplings around these trees, but you've got one here, here, one over here, and one behind me. So some would like to leave all of them. It's really probably not a good idea. So your hockey stick, you've got just right on the, the edge. Uh, our advice would be is to remove this one after you've removed the small saplings, is to remove this one. This will then give the other crowns an ability to uh, grow wider and more branches and leaf structure in the future. So what we have afterwards then is a hole in the forest, which is what we want. So the remaining four maples will then branch out up top from where this tree used to be is the hole it's created and actually create more branches and more leaves. So you want holes up in the forest canopy so that the other trees expand, grow more leaves, more photosynthesis, more sap. So double trees, they do both run when they're mature. Decision needs to be made which one would go if you wanted to remove them, especially if you have adjacent trees that are, uh, have good vigor. Uh, we would recommend removing this one I have my hand on and to allow the other tree a chance to expand its canopy. So from our thin tree, we now have a nice radius greater than the hockey stick around this particular tree for it to grow and expand. So your thinning also gives you a byproduct. You can either use a smaller diameter uh, stove wood, which, uh, which burns really well, I use a lot of them into what we call sugar wood, which are longer and fit into the evaporator nicely. Something to consider as well when you're doing your thinning is other species of trees. This little site, another afforested site, has a little bit of white birch, some white pine and bur oak. So our goal is to keep the bur oak and some red oak into this system so you have diversity. This particular site was thinned three times in the last 25 to 28 years starting with very, very small saplings. As you can see, some of the trees that are left have now taken on some issues. This one's either disease or sun scald. Obviously in the fourth thinning, which needs to be done now, that would be removed. 